Johnny here, guys, and today we're talking about the Foxeer Apollo DJI camera and the Sharkbite Digisite V3. Did you know that these are actually the same camera? That's right, the same case, the same lens, the same sensor. The only difference is the cable connector that they put on the back, which allows you to connect to either DJI or the HD Zero system. Now there's probably a little bit more variation than just a connector, but for your purposes, everything else is the same on both of these. And I have both options here, and we're gonna look at some HD Zero footage as well as some DJI footage to kind of let you know how the systems compare when you look at them apples to apples, back to back, flown on the same type of area. And you can see a little bit more of the image quality and detail in the DJI system, but the HD Zero system, while it may not have that much image quality, it can give you full low latency on 60 frames per second, while DJI cannot. DJI 60 frames per second gives you a half frame per second, a little bit lower latency. Now, why is that? That's because the DJI system needs 120 frames per second in order to get the least amount of latency possible. The HD Zero does not have that restriction, so it can deliver to you full low latency, lower and more consistent than the DJI system on only 60 frames per second. So you trade a little bit of image quality, but you gain better latency feel. So given that, I would only fly this DJI Apollo version of this camera on something smaller, a three inch. This is a three and a half inch Shocker Lite that we had a review up for very recently, or maybe coming very soon. Foxeer Digisight V3. This is Foxeer's latest HD Zero camera and has a gigantic lens on here wow look at the size of this thing very impressive you get the same 60 fps low latency shark bite very large half inch cmos sensor in there now this is the regular lens and this large one is the starlight lens option so you can see you get a bit more size. Now let's do a quick comparison with the other cameras. This is the Digisite V2 nano camera right there that is quite a bit smaller than both of these right here. This one actually uses the same 1.7 lens on the Predator Nano. The Runcam V1 camera right here. This is the HD Zero V1 camera. A uh, very, very good image quality here, but let's see how these compare. How is this new generation of HD Zero cameras going to compare image quality wise? Now, do these three even matter now that this one exists, the HD Zero V2 camera? Because all three of these first cameras are 16 by nine only but this bad boy over here is four by three. Now for the HD Zero V2 camera, I was left wanting a bit more protection. So Steven Zero Volume modeled me up this bad boy. We actually went through quite a few iterations here in order to get the camera view perfect and have these little extra protections without hitting the props. So he did quickly quite a few versions of this. First, he kind of had something like this, but we wanted even more camera protection up here in the case of a front end impact. You don't want to be smashing these incredibly rare cameras. So this is quite a nice feature. You're gonna be able to keep something like this safe. This is the HD Zero provided uh, camera option for the 533 switchback long body right here that has the race v1 vtx in there as you can see it just does not offer a ton of camera protection but you could have some nice designers out there that could potentially uh, modify something like this for you to run on your setup and get a little bit more of that protection and this is about the biggest size i would put this camera on it the 60 frames per second on something small like this still feels great. I don't notice the extra latency, but when you get to five inch speeds, uh, it definitely impacts me on the Polar and on this one flown on five inch, it was just enough latency to really mess me up. I was crashing in areas I wouldn't have normally ever crashed. So for DJI, the half frame rate is an issue on bigger crafts, but on smaller crafts, this 
image that you get out of either one of these cameras on either one of these systems is spectacular. It's really, really nice. Straight out of the camera, you get an image that is very, very usable for having an HD recording to the DJI goggles. Yes, you have a little bit more breakup on the SharkBite system, but I think it really gives a good example on just how good of an image you can get out of either one of these HD systems when you actually have a nice lens combined with a nice sensor, combined with some decent color profiles out of the box. Now I'm gonna show you both the regular lens and the starlight lens. Now I don't really see a ton of additional light uh, coming to the starlight lens. There is more and you can tell the difference, but the regular sensor on this actually does pretty darn good in low light. Maybe not quite as bright as the polar camera, but in my opinion, the better image that you get for me, this requires less massaging in post. It's like a better image right out of the camera, which is what I prefer for the, my FPV quads. Uh, so I like the image out of this. I'll deal with maybe having 10% less brightness. So as long as you're flying somewhere that has any type of lights, you'll be able to see plenty. Um, so these are fantastic cameras, finally a micro size. I did notice that when I flew this around a few times, uh, freestyling around the night spot, 16 by nine was perfect. I didn't feel any shortcomings by not having 4.3 uh, at all until I actually tried to fly it on a track. Then the 4.3, then the 16 by nine aspect ratio was really bothering me it was making me fly way way slower than i would like to because when you're doing some of those vertical maneuvers when you're going split us into a gate when you're going orbit over a gate you need to be able to see what's above you and below you uh having a little bit of that image cut off means that you can't react until a fraction of a second later when you're closer to it when those things come into view to all the freestylers out there that say 16 by 9 is totally fine and i actually prefer it i totally get what you're saying now for freestyle where you're not getting that close to items that are above or below you when you have more of a when you can take your time when you're not going max speed and trying to get close to stuff it's totally doable so for freestylers six times 16 by 9 might actually be welcome because you're going to have better looking footage at the end and you can see totally fine but for racers we do need the 4x3 it's confirmed we already kind of knew it i will say that barwell did a comparison of both of these cameras on a bench doing some actually photography videography type setups with a color board so you can really see the difference in detail so go check out his video if you want to see more pixel peeping but we're going to show you some real world flight footage comparing these two what do you guys think in the comments uh do you prefer the hd0 or the dji option i really like that no matter which system you choose you can get a really nice sensor a really nice lens combination for a good price that comes with the cable from fox here nice job Thanks, guys.